Es bruta. We've arrived in the Parador. They have given us room 301, which if you're ever in the Parador here in Cuenca, get room 301. Not because it's haunted, but because the views are spectacular. Wow, right of the gorge, of the hanging houses, and we're late for lunch, so we need to rush. The delightful old town of Cuenca is one of the strangest in Spain. So says the Photos Guide to Spain from 2007. Strangest? What does that mean? What is it about this once mighty, now humble Castilian town just two hours from Madrid, deep in La Mancha, and hanging impossibly on the edge of a magnificent gorge? Yoli and I spent a weekend exploring. We stayed in the Parador, a spectacular 16th century monastery that has pride of place in this almost fairy tale landscape. Thank you to Paradores for sponsoring this video, and welcome to Cuenca. So we didn't know if this place was open. I was worried because often in August, places, particularly in central Spain, might close because people go on holiday to the beach. Um, so I called numerous times. The phone didn't work, but it's open. And I love it already. The food's been cooked just there. There's a little hole in the wall where food comes out of the kitchen. The people seem really nice. We already have inside jokes. We already have inside jokes with the staff. And this unnameable piece of cartilage fatty pig head is yum. <laughs> So guys, this dish, which I can't say properly, morte, morteruelo. Ole, uh, morteruelo. Morteruelo. Arta. It's one of those ones where you got to get the E and the R. They, they call this the foie gras of La Mancha. And it's, it's a pate, it's a terrine that's made from hare and partridge and game meats. And it's famous from here. Oh, this looks really good. It's creamy. And the idea is, that, I mean, everybody around us is eating like massive chunks of, of grilled pork and things like this. This is not the land of salads and things like that. So <laughs> to be here in July and be eating this seems a bit surreal a little bit, but it's good. It's yummy. Oh. Ooh. Oh man. This is peasant food. This is this is rib sticking food. This is um I should not be drinking white wine with this. I need I red know. wine. Embarrassing. Guys next up we're going super regional here with the food and our first meal. You're looking at this and you think, what the hell is it? This is the braided intestine of a milk-fed lamb. So it's called a tharajo, and I've had these at Casatoni in Madrid. This is a little different. There is two options for this. There is the milk-fed lamb version and the older lamb version. You squeeze a little lemon over it, and it's wrapped around a vine stick, and it's served with a side salad. Oh, it's really good. Mm -hmm. It's crispy on the outside and kind of bacony. I mean, the inside is more offaly, but because these are so young, there's not a strong offal flavor. So it more has a complexity to it. I mean, true food from Cuenca. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, this is beautiful. I don't know why people, people sometimes in Spain they're like, and they're like, ooh, this is beautiful. Like, beautiful, lovely meat, like the, you know, the char, they're, mm, gorgeous. Farajo is the new Molleja. Mm -hmm. So guys, once you hit Cuenca, you need to see if the place you're visiting, El Bodegón does, has homemade resoli. And this is a drink which was originally of Moorish origin, but was only drunk traditionally in Semana Santa in Easter. There's a twist of fate, don't know how those two connect, but now you can get it any time <laughs> an of the year. An, alco too. an alcoholic, right? So... <laughs> I feel like Wikipedia was a little uh, brief loose. with the, a little loose with the facts there. And I'm going to read what's in here because I'm going to get it wrong. It's got Aguardiente de la Sierra. So Aguardiente is eau de vie, so strong, pure alcohol. Coffee, it's got orange in there, the, pe the peel, sugar, and cinnamon. Smooth. Mm. Oh, it's lovely. It's like you're sitting with your grandma drinking an iced tea on the balcony and she's like, bring the resoli, you know? 
Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, chicos. Hasta luego. Chao. 4 p.m. Late July, Castilla La Mancha. No shade. It's a very dangerous place. So we're going to take a refuge in the cathedral. So we've escaped from the heat here into the cathedral, which is the perfect place when it's 4,000 degrees outside. These thick walls make it so cool and quiet in here. It's true refuge, but what I wasn't expecting is to be so blown away by this place. It's easy to get cathedral and church fatigue when you're traveling around Europe. Yeah. But but the cathedral here in Cuenca is gorgeous. This what, is just what is gorgeous. It? I love the simplicity of it. It's just like stone, you know, it's just yeah. beautiful white and like yellowy stone and nothing much more. It's not loaded with a bunch of, you know, paintings or anything like that. It's it, very simple, beautiful. It almost looks like a, a church or a cathedral from the Holy Land, almost like yeah. a Knights Templar place. It's wonderful. That's great. And so this cathedral is right on the Plaza Mayor. So in the eighth century, Cuenca was a Moorish town and then in the the 12th century the Christians conquered it as is the story in so much of Spain particularly this part in the middle of Spain and they built where the mosque was here in the Plaza Mayor they built the cathedral on top of it and so there you go first uh, gothic cathedral in Spain I that's think that's true the first gothic right? cathedral in Spain and there you go really nice the best first try I would say one of the best I mean it's funny the first time you do something sometimes you like get better each time but sometimes the first time you do something it's like wow nailed you nailed it, it. Wow, wow, Still pretty hot. Yeah, back out of the aircon. Yeah, I think uh, we should see some art. <laughs> yeah, more museums with the aircon. <laughs> Agua de Cuenca. <laughs> so one of the kind of fascinating aspects of Cuenca is that there are these two modern art museums that you just don't expect and they're famous in Spain. There's an abstract art museum, the first one that was ever founded in Spain in the mid 60s. And then there's the Antonio Pérez Foundation, which is full of contemporary art. And as I say, in the middle of this Castilian town, you don't expect this kind of variety, I guess. In the 1960s, Spanish modern artist and collector Fernando Zobel was trying to decide where to house the first museum of Spanish abstract art. Maybe Madrid, maybe even Paris. Except over dinner, a friend from Cuenca convinced him to set it up here, smack bang in the middle of Castilla-La Mancha. It put Cuenca, of all places, on the map for modern art. And what's more, he founded the museum inside one of the famous hanging houses, which is part of the reason they survive to this day. So abstract art is an unexpected use for a 15th century hanging building like this, but I think that's Cuenca, right? This collision of things that gives it so much energy. And you can see our bedroom from here, over in the Parador. You see it, Yoli? You reckon? I don't know if you guys can see, but all the rock formations are there. You know, Cuenca is built on this outcropping and you can see behind the Parador these big walls of cliffs. It's, it's, it's just, a, it's, it, physically it's a magical place. And I've realized what it is that I find kind of fascinating about this museum here is that it represents those two Spains. There's the very traditional, the, the Tarajo Spain, the, the Taberna Spain, the tavern, and then that modern impulse, that 20th century impulse of, of new art, of Picasso, of, of, of Dali, and, and, and all that. It's just, this is what I kind of love about it. It's, it's both parts of that country represented in one small town on an outcropping. So things get even more dramatic about 10 minutes up the road from the Abstract Art Museum. There's the Antonio Pérez Museum. Antonio Pérez was a collector who divided his time between Paris and Cuenca, and he founded this contemporary art museum, this collection, which is huge and sprawling and fascinating, full of contemporary Spanish artists. Yoli's convinced me we need to jump in the pool back at the Parador, which I'm fine with. I brought... I'm sure you will agree with me. I'm sure you guys will agree with Yoli. <laughs> so I have to be honest, I'm not really the pool guy. I don't even know what to do. I said to Yoli, so do I, can I go down barefoot or like I'm a Kiwi, 
<laughs> or do I? I didn't even bring like clothes for the pool. You I don't know my... how to behave. You, the I minute you walk in, it's like I, you're totally confused. You don't know where to put yourself. Just looking for a bar, really. <laughs> and I think there is one. Okay, so a little pre-dinner drink in the bar in the Parador. Salud. Parador, I can never say Parador. that. Parador. Parador. Salud, guys. Mm -hmm. So do you remember this place, Yoli? I do. We were here about five years ago or so. Yeah, when right? we came to Cuenca. We came to Cuenca to, well, have a walk around and we spent a night or two nights. I think we spent a night tonight. here on the outside of town. We didn't stay in the Parador, no. but often when we're exploring places, we'll check out the Parador. And, and even if we're not staying them, obviously we'll have a drink in the bar. Because these places are so historic, you can walk in and explore them and have a drink in the bar. And, and this place, this monastery with some views incredible and, views yeah. is a great place to have a drink for dinner as the sun sets. Only. So we don't know where we're going for dinner yet. Tough. Tension. So we've picked the highest restaurant in the town. Of course. For dinner. <laughs> Who said life should be easy? <laughs> Protestant work ethic, even though I was born a Catholic. <laughs> Currently non-practicing. No, no. So we're right at the top of the Calle San Pedro, I think mm -hmm. it's called, which is the main street here that leads to the top of the gorge. I mean, we can't quite see because they're over the road, but being up here, you feel kind of like you're on top of the world. This place, Maria Morena, is a, kind of a roasting restaurant, but they've got a nice terrace outside, so let's see. Wine is coming. Was it worth oh, the wow. hike? wow. Yes, it was, now that I see it in the camera. <laughs> I told you though, light. the light behind her was beautiful and she didn't believe me, I had to show her. So. <laughs> Very you. romantic, right? Salute. Salute. So, we've ordered oven baked rice. That sounds terrible. Arroz al horno, which is coming. But it's going to take 15 minutes. So, what? so we have smoked sardines and tomato. Two of my most favorite things in the world. Smoked fish and tomatoes. Fresh tomato. Looks good. Tell you guys, if you're going for lunch or dinner here in Cuenca, I mean, there's a lot of kind of touristy looking restaurants further down the street, the Calle San Pedro, just keep on coming up. And once you get up here, particularly in the evening, I feel like I'm enthroned uh, <laughs> looking out. It's cool, it's beautiful, the cicadas are singing. I mean, it's a really romantic spot for, mm. for two lovebirds. <laughs> so, uh, sorry, sorry about that. So anyway, hopefully the rice is better than my jokes. So. <laughs> Salud. We're gonna have our romantic dinner. We'll see you back in the hotel room. I might have mentioned that I'm a sucker for a good robe, but so is Yoli. Yes, I am. Night. Good night. So guys, you're gonna have to excuse the terrible hair and terrible top, but I wanted to come out early. Yoli's sleeping in a little bit, and I wanted to come out early and just show you the views. Look at the light. Here's the, the Parador that we're staying at. You can see how it's on this rocky outcropping, just separate from the, from the rest of the town. There's the bridge that leads across, and there's the town just bathed in morning light. And if you, if you do come here, really get up early, come for a walk up in the town, and just see the morning sun envelop the valley. It's beautiful. You know, we were here five years ago and it's not like I remember. It's, it's more dramatic, it's more poetic, it's more magical. Very much in love with Cuenca right now. Anyway, I better get back for Yoli and for breakfast. So 
what's the plan today, Yoli? So we haven't done any strolling around really, so that's something that I always enjoy, just, you know, getting just um, lost in the streets, you know, of Cuenca. So uh, we're gonna do a little bit of that, a little bit of exploring Cuenca today, exploring the city, walking around, and just, you know, discovering lovely little corners that I enjoy very much. So you might be wondering where we are, this beautiful ceiling. So breakfast is served in where the monks used to eat their lunch and dinner, the comedor. And so nowadays we're sitting here chatting, having our breakfast, chatting with Yoli, drinking our coffee. Back in the day, the monks though would eat in silence. And up there is the pulpit and one of the monks would be reading from the Bible. So the idea was to sustain the body through the food, but to sustain the soul through the readings from the Bible and the mind and things like that. So I guess we're only sustaining the body this morning, right? Yeah, I only the body. Um, yeah. I mean, my my speech is pretty soulful. Yoli's presence is sustaining my soul. <laughs> so I'll drink coffee to that. <laughs> So the 16th century Dominican monastery was saved and turned into the Parador in 1993. And, and like so many other Paradores, it's, a, it's just such a historic building that, was, that is kept alive by the hotel chain. And it's beautifully done. All these places, they, they really respect the history of the place, but also modernize them a little bit. And this cloister just kind of walking through with the, the classical music. I love it. I'm in my element here. I've also lost Yoli, so I don't know where she is. I'm gonna find her. Oh, hello. What are you doing? Hi. Just typing away. Well, taking a moment to relax, too. Is that a confessional? <laughs> yeah. See, I couldn't lie. <laughs> hey, Yoli. Yeah. I have a confession to make as well. You know how I said we were going to go and explore the town in a very leisurely way? Yeah. Before we do that, <sighs> We're gonna climb the hill to the highest most point of Cuenca. Sounds great. And get some great views. That's amazing. A 30 minute walk. It's not too hot out there yet. Sound good? Okay, but we're strolling around later? Then we'll do the relaxing walk later. Okay. Drinks in the plaza later. All right, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> hmm. So up behind the Parador is this two kilometer path unpaved path up to what's called the Cerro del Socorro. Eso. Which kind of means like the SOS summit. Like the help me summit. So I hope we don't have to say help me when we get there. I don't know. 1.9 kilometers to go. Uh. So we've been going for 15 minutes and we see this. I don't know if that means that someone died at this point. I'm starting to feel a bit scared. Am I gonna make it? We're gonna make it. Onwards, <laughs> upwards. Huh? Another one. Oh man, they're dropping like flies. <laughs> Maybe we are the next ones. This way. 15 minutes. Oh god. You lead, baby. Yeah. Almost to the top. That, thereabouts, is where we had dinner last night, to give you some context. <sighs> last bit, there's Jesus. Oh. He's waiting for you. Yeah, he's gonna welcome us. You lead. I lead. You're sweating. Of course. So you're probably starting to get the idea that Cuenca is kind of all about the views as well. And if you want the most dramatic views, you've got to come up to this SOS summit. The whole sweep of Cuenca at our feet. Pretty dramatic. Don't do this during the day in summer. Do it in the morning. The morning light would hit the rocks and hit the town. Be a great jog up here. Yeah. Next time we'll jog up, Yoli. Ah, uh, well. <laughs> so I hope you can hear me over the breeze. This is the San Pablo Bridge, which reminds me of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Hopefully the... Uh, the finale isn't quite like that. And this is the bridge that connects the Parador, the, the, the monastery where we're staying, with the town. And it's the best spot for views of the hanging houses. There was actually originally a stone bridge here right up until the end of the 19th century. And then it kind of crumbled or was demolished. And the town didn't want to pay for it to be repaired because they're like, the only purpose was for the monks to get from the town to the, to the monastery. And they're like, we don't want to pay for that. But in the early 20th century, this iron bridge was built on the foundations of that old bridge. And the most famous image of Cuenca are these hanging houses, Las Casas Colgadas, that were built in, from the 13th to the 15th century, literally building this town on this kind of outcropping. They ran out of space, and so they started building them hanging off the ledge. And the idea in the 13th century of building a house hanging over a ledge and living in it, I can't get my head around that. 
they kind of fell into disrepair and then I think in about the 19th century they were they were rescued and and restored one of them is where we visited the abstract art museum yesterday and I mean they're pretty spectacular right yeah they're beautiful I don't know if you can see me, but when you're exploring, make sure you check out these guys, the Rascacielos del Barrio de San Martin, the skyscrapers of St. Martin's neighborhood. They are 15th and 16th century, and they're up to eight, nine stories high. They literally are skyscrapers from, from the 15th century, which is phenomenal. So I, d I don't know any good spots to eat lunch in the Plaza Mayor, but it's worth visiting and grabbing a, I don't know, a Tinto de Verano or something like that. What I love about the square and running down the hill are the colored houses. All the houses are painted in different colors and it's, I, think, I keep saying it, part of that magic of this place. It's lovely. It's like just bringing color. You don't necessarily expect a lot of color sometimes yeah. in this part of Spain, right? It expects to be kind of the, the desert colors and things like that. Suddenly there's this kind of splash of, of, of vibrancy, which, which is, yeah, kind of part of the collision of things that I love in, in Cuenca. So from Plaza Mayor, if you uh, take the street called San Pedro and you go all the way, all the way up then you'll end up where we had dinner last night uh, which is a lovely lovely spot with great views and you will also see on the way the remains of this great castle normally you can climb onto the castle ruins but it seems to be locked today maybe it's covid related i don't know but this is where the original moorish castle was i find it fascinating that this car's still still driving through it the road still goes through and this castle in the 16th century became the home of the inquisition here in cuenca and it was finally destroyed in the 19th century by napoleonic troops napoleonic troops did a lot of damage throughout spain when they when they invaded and now look at it it's kind of in ruins but kind of majestic in its ruins right So in true magical Cuenca fashion, we're finishing up with a beautiful al fresco lunch here in the ruins of a medieval church. It's, it's kind of gorgeous, really. It's great. So check out the video that we have uh, of another trip uh, very near Madrid, where we slept in a haunted castle. Should be appearing over here somewhere. We'll see you over in that video in a moment, and hasta Ciao. luego. See you in Cuenca. Ciao.